Okay, so here we are. This isn't Dragon at all. Uh, we're here with the best narrative game of 2020 here at Shack News. Uh, so Last of Us 2, we're done? Well, I, I, I used to love thinking that this was like the Telltale Memorial uh, best narrative game because <laughs> there always used to be a Telltale game in this uh, in this category. Now I feel like that's been taken over by Don't Not Entertainment. And, that's uh, true. To be fair, Don't Not's been doing very well for themselves. Like everything, everything they put out has come out really, really well. But I feel like Tell Me Why, as many people didn't like Tell Me Why for whatever reason, I thought it was some of their best work. Mm -hmm. And I think part of it is it's a story about twin siblings. And what th there's a whole tragic thing that happens when when one of them's a kid, like their mom goes crazy and tries to kill one of them. And they're apart for a decade. And now they're like reunited. Uh, one of them is trans. One of them was uh, was born female and uh, transitioning to male. And, and while that's a big part of the story, it doesn't take over the whole narrative. But it's it's more than anything a story about being twins and about the tragic things that happen like during their childhood, trying to go trying to investigate exactly what made their mom go crazy. And there's so much interesting story that unfolds throughout throughout this whole thing. And part of it is the plot device that takes advantage of the fact that they're twins. They can tell what each other's thinking. They have like that twin telepathy thing going on where they can communicate with one another. But also in trying to uncover things that happened in the past, like they'll see like memories start to manifest. One of them will anyway. And then the other one will be like, no, I don't remember it happening this way. I remember it happening this way. And you have to determine which memory is more reliable. And I thought that was a really cool mechanic. I thought that was like a super cool idea. Don't Nod loves to experiment with stuff and it doesn't always land. Like I was, I was, saying, I was saying earlier off camera that uh, something that Twin Mirror tried, like Don't Nod released Twin Mirror earlier in the month. They tried something experimental and I thought it fell flat. But this is an idea that I thought really hit the whole thing of like, you got to determine which twin memory feels better to you. It's not even like which one is more correct or whatever, like whatever feels like it gels with the story better to you. So I definitely love that. And I love the puzzles that, uh, that tell me why I implemented. I love that th you have to go through like a little book of fairy tales. That the, that the twins collected when they were kids. They made their own little fairy tale world, their own little fairy tale cinematic universe. And you gotta go through, you gotta go through the whole book and like read through the stories and you'll find hints for like the puzzle solutions within the stories. And if you don't wanna go through any of that, well, you can just smash it. You can go, you can go that direction too, in case you're, you don't like any of that bullshit. So, <laughs> so I thought that that was a little, little cool uh, implementation of choice. Uh, I came out of uh, Life is Strange 2. I, it wasn't my favorite. I, I, I like the way they stuck, stuck the landing. Tell me why is a story that I enjoyed from start to finish. And I think it's probably one of the best, one of the, one of Don't Not's best games to date so far. Awesome. Uh, yeah, no, they, Don't Not's on a, a nice uh, tear here with the Life is Strange series. And uh, what was it that there was that spinoff? Uh, it was Alex Kid. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, Captain Spirit. Captain Spirit. Sorry, Alex Kidd's a different game. <laughs> Alex I, I Kidd from Sega. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. I don't know why I mixed up I, those two. <laughs> they're they're well on their way to to doing great things. I, I think they just went indie. Well, well, they've been indie, but I think they just said they went pub, the publishing route for the first time. I, I just want to echo one thing that uh, that I said way back on Weekend Confirmed, back, back in those days. And one of the things that Garnet brought up when we were talking about Telltale, is his concern was, are they going to become a factory? Are they going to just like pump out like these things to the point that they're no longer sustainable? And sure enough, that happened to Telltale. Sure did. And I would hate for that to happen to Don't Nod. I'm glad they're taking chances, but I really, I thought that Tell Me Why and Twin Mirror six months apart was a little I, much. So I, I think don't. what's different, Ozzy, is that Telltale embraced licensed IP where Don't Nod tells original stories. And their original mm. stories are great. Yeah. I think that's the big difference for me. That's why that's I actually point. like the Don't Nod games more than a lot of Telltale games. Same. Mm -hmm. And at least they're willing to try different stuff. Like Exactly. And different... and push boundaries when it comes to representation. Like, tell me why I did this year. 
It, very much so. And I and one of my favorite things about Tell Me Why is yes, one of the main characters is trans, but that doesn't overwhelm the narrative. They don't mm -hmm. beat you over the head with that. Mm -hmm. That's not that's not Tyler's character. Tyler's character is not the trans person. Tyler has his own character. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm I'm just glad they went in that direction. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I, I just think it's it's something that um there's nothing token about Tyler is what yeah. I'm saying. I want to see more studios take chances like that. So, uh, but I feel you. I don't want to see them become a factory either because we saw what happened to Telltale. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Anyone else want to shout out a game best narrative? <clears throat> um, I was going to talk about uh give a quick, very brief talk to The Last of Us too because we've already talked about it at nauseum. But it's, mm -hmm. it's definitely going to be my pick for this category. I think we talked a lot about the narrative. <clears throat> yeah. uh, during our live stream. Uh, yesterday we did and a couple other categories from our, our previous recordings but um yeah i mean it's it's one of the best narratives i've experienced in a video game i think josh and i are running out of ways to talk about why it's good it's just a a great character study of what uh revenge can do to a person and how uh the ghosts of our past can come back to haunt us and I the, think it's yeah the thing that drives me nuts about like that that narrative i don't understand why they got so much hate because in the bigger it's, picture it's, it has nothing to do with the narrative. It has yeah, nothing it to do with what's got you to that character. It is, yeah, it's one sole decision they did that. Yeah, that split the fan base. And the, yeah, the, no spoilers here, but yeah. there was something that happened that introduced a new character, and uh, oh, I didn't, that I like event, it. that event, which happens pretty early in the game, it set off a lot of the Last of Us Part One fans. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but I don't think that speaks to the narrative at all. This is a narrative about revenge and also how becoming encompassed with revenge can destroy a person. Yep. And I think those are really cool themes. Yeah, and I think it's it's important to to talk about, like Donovan said, we're kind of running out of ways to, <laughs> to talk this game up. But I, I think it's important to, to really focus, especially in this case, on the cues and things like that that players get along the way to see this character, um, Ellie, and even some in the other character that you, you play as, to see an Ellie like she has this facade that none of this gets to her. And, and a lot of people brought this up like in reviews and like just in, in, in talk of the game that none of the killing matters to her, but that's not true at all. Like if you actually pay attention to the character and the way that she carries herself through the cutscenes and things like that. Like you can see things like her fist shaking, her hand, you know, trembling, like her as a person breaking, like you can see these things happening to her and like the effect that it's having on her. And I think that that's something that would have been really, really easy for them to not care about, but they went through the trouble of showing all of that so subtly and like slowly building it up to really drive the narrative home. But yeah, I just, I mean, I know people are indifferent about The Walking Dead, but I think it also shows great, like there are consequences to actions, not necessarily in consequences, just, just reactions to actions that people do in this world. And like, they explore that in The Last of Us 2. And I really enjoyed that. Like, you're not just, you know, whatever you would, you would, you did in Last of Us 2, you know, like I said, no spoilers, but like that's going to have repercussions in the second film. Like to think it didn't, is kind of like, like jaw dropping. Like those people. You mean The Last of Us 1. Yeah. Yeah, and like yeah. and seeing that continuation and seeing the the cause and react, like that's the whole world. Like whenever you do something, even at the piece of shit camps in the first one where you're killing cannibals, they all have a story. You know what I mean? Like it's it's and it's kind of opens up this giant wormhole to me where it's like, holy crap, like all these people are just trying to survive, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no, definitely. Uh and since I'm kind of already on the mic, I guess I'll go ahead and take out a, a quick moment here to to throw one out for uh for Spirit Fair, this game is, I don't know how many of you guys had a chance to play it. Um, in a year that's kind of been racked with lots of unfortunate things um, and with a lot of people like experiencing the deaths of, of, of close ones, um, I think coming out with a game that focuses very heavily on death and like passing on from, from this world to the next it's kind of something that people might have been hesitant to try out, but I think that Spirit Fair does such a really good job of tugging at your heartstrings with the characters and the narrative that, that plays out 
throughout the game. Um, all of the characters are really unique and they really kind of give their own take on like death and moving on from from this life to the next. Like it's it's really easy to kind of write that off as like, oh yeah, when you die, you die. But it's like, you know, it, it takes that idea and spins it on its head and breaks it down into to multiple experiences and narratives all within one underlying, like, overlying narrative um, that just feels really good and kind of, like I said, tugs at your heartstrings. Like, it, it brings tears to your eyes in spots. It makes you laugh in other, like, it warms your heart. Um, and to see those, the developers of that game, like, do such a good job with that, like, it definitely, I think, uh, deserves it a place uh, at the table here. For sure. I'm going to uh, give a shout out to uh, Go. Go for it. Ghost of Tsushima. Of I'm course. Shocked. I know. Didn't see it coming. Uh, it's like every great samurai film thrown into one. It borrows so much from Akira Kurosawa's legacy. Uh, it's incredible. I don't know. There's so many stories that are adjacent to the main, uh, the main story that you get really pulled into and become emotionally invested in. Like TJ was talking about uh, one of like his favorite characters uh, this year was like, uh, was a clan leader who had lost her entire family to betrayal and was now seeking revenge. There's the story of two uh, brother warrior monks, one that was killed like the, uh, by the Mongols, the other one trying to like protect what's left of his temple. Uh, there's the story of like an elderly uh, uh, archer, uh, like one of the greatest archers uh, ever, uh, trains a student. The student uh, joins the Mongols, and then then you have to hunt them down uh, in order to, you know, uh, avenge him uh like like lots of little things like that also the main story uh is like the character is completely conflicted between his uh you know his traditional samurai honor and the honor of his family versus his desperation to save his people and what's left of his family uh from total destruction and his consequences have dramatic actions that you see play out throughout the entire storyline as well as uh you know a huge choice that you have to make at the end of the game that is super impactful uh and like uh you know the relationship between you and your uncle is really driven home throughout this game because you're as a young child uh you experience like one of the things that the game does is you experience the day of your father's funeral as like a young child and that helps to drive home the real the inter the intimate relationship that you have with the character's uncle as well and and it all ties together in such in such a strong way that it, it's gorgeous there's also like a few side quests that really got to me emotionally like i think i already talked about the one where you're dealing with like uh, an, el an elderly woman with dementia, you know, who's slowly dying. And uh, that person has a deep emotional connection with the main character as well. Uh, just little things like that. Like everything is tied to everything in this game. And uh, it's presented excellently in a very cinematic style. And I cannot get enough of it. We'll give a shout out to Hades, um, not to belabor any points, but it, it, most of the times in roguelikes, dying can be demoralizing because you might have a really good run with a lot of cool loot, a uh, high level character, only to have to start from scratch. Hades does a really good job of not only making death um, uh, meaningful in terms of the narrative, but also removing that frustration. Um, it's really cool to see a roguelike that could actually figure out a way to to take those mechanics and make them play to their story. I thought it was great. I mean, every single thing in Hades uh, is built to move the story forward in some way or another. Like, being defeated in the game moves the story forward. Being defeated by a certain boss moves the story 
or being defeated by certain enemies or pitfalls moves the story forward. Actually beating the game is not the end of the game. It's a part of something that moves the story forward. There are so many narrative paths in Hades and it doesn't break or trip over itself in the process of delivering it. And for, for how many narrative triggers there are, good goodness gracious, it's so good. I love it. Okay. Anything else? What was it for me? Oh, I think it's, I think it's voting time. Okay, let's vote. I'll start. Tell me why. Uh, Ozzy won me with his, um, uh, his, not blurb, but talking about tell me why. That sounds uh, fantastic and important. And um, yeah, he had, he had the most moving, compelling argument as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I'll, I'll second that. Another for tell me why. Um, I've gotten to write a lot about Don't Nod <laughs> this year is one of my long reads. And uh, I think they're doing really important work in their narrative driven games. But unlike Telltale, it's it, it feels more of like a game than just the uh, choose your own adventure book. So tell me why. I'm going to cast my vote for uh, Last of Us 2. Even though I, I am with Oswit with a lot of his points on Don't Not, I love their uh, titles they dropped this year. But uh, going with Last of Us Part 2. I got to yeah. uh, pop my vote behind Last of Us 2 as well. Okay, so Donovan was on. Sorry, I need to catch up real quick. <clears throat> Donovan was Last of Us 2. Sam was Last of Us 2. David, Ozzy, and Bill were telling me why. Correct. Right. Okay. I vote Last of Us 2. This has gone Last of, Last of Us 2. Last of Us 2. Greg's on Last of Us 2. Blake? Um, I guess I'll go with Tell Me Why. Okay. Interesting. Josh? Uh, Last of Us 2. DJ? I'm gonna go with Last of Us 2. Hmm. Hmm. If I vote for Tell Me Why, it still loses. Uh, I think oh. Tell Me Why did a really good job, but I think the best narrative game was The Last of Us 2. So I'm going to vote for The Last of Us 2. It got seven votes to Tell Me Why's 4. Uh, both games deserve praise for their uh, narrative design. Agreed. Mm -hmm. So uh, The Last of Us 2 is your Shaq News best narrative game of 2020. Gun, it come for me. Cause I know I'll kill my enemies when they come. 